The Guilford Fire Department responds to all kinds of calls. Fires, of course, medical calls, and people and animals falling through the ice. And with the cold temperatures happening this weekend, firefighters here are worried those type of calls will really heat up. Victim, victim will be uh, Judd. Guilford fire trucks are loaded up with all kinds of emergency gear. But they bring along something more seasonal these days. You, know, you get above freezing one day and below freezing the next day. The freeze thaw cycle has been brutal this year. So rescues involve fire and ice. So that's what their four yellow suits are for. The suits are watertight because firefighters know during ice rescues, they'll be going into the water as well. The ice hasn't had time to develop the way that it should. That's what two dogs suddenly realized Wednesday when they went through. Thankfully, Guilford firefighters got to them quickly. I'll have my guy that's in the back of the white truck dressing on the way here. That way when I pull up, he can get out and go. And that's so, probably what happened with those dogs. More than likely. Guilford fire suited up for us again. You're good. You're good. Right. To show that the ice just walk is nowhere thick enough. You're gonna break an ice. That's his warning sign. To go out on. Oh, oh that hurt. A stroll out here is literally walking on thin ice. It's common uh, misconception that the uh, you know it's been cold for a couple of days and you have the ice is thick enough to, to put people on. The strength of the ice just isn't there. Even if you have a little bit of thickness. Just to make a point. As you hit the ice, here's your spike. Guilford firefighters wanted to get me out there. This is uh, not fun. Oh, there's a crack. Oh boy, no. It's really cracking now. Oh, it's really thin here. Getting out is the hard part. Glad I had those picks. To stay off the ice. It's not cold enough and hasn't been cold enough long enough. Books return to the Berlin Peck Memorial Library with hopes to reopen long overdue. The only thing to check out Wednesday right in that area was the water damage. They raised everything off the floor. From a sprinkler pipe, which burst. The elbow cracked, it was a one inch elbow. The real problem started in the children's nonfiction section. 1989, it was built, and there's not had been a problem with any frozen pipes. The leak gushed. For thousands of gallons of water. Watering many books, ironically, about plants. They're still wet. You can still see the water damage on them. A large collection of books. It's ripping. It's actually falling apart. With so many different stories. Cost is usually part of the narrative at public libraries. And after this situation, this library has to figure out what's more cost effective. Replace the damaged books or dry out the pages by actually freeze drying them. Close to $15,000 worth of books were damaged, uh, almost 800 titles. As for reconstructing everything, you know, they've got to do the insulation and the sheetrock and the ceiling tiles. The flooding went down the walls. Yeah, we're coming down to the lower level community center. Soaking the Berlin Community Center below. Got down into the other offices, break rooms. Wet spots marked Check the moisture. much of the drywall had to be ripped out and thrown out. It all has to dry out. Dehumidification process. With a huge dehumidifier. And I'll continue running until we get the moisture down to an acceptable level. Before the last phase of restoration can begin on two levels. Children's department will probably not open until next week. And we will need help getting stuff put back together. In Berlin, John Charlton, Fox 61 News. It's the end of Corporal Sal Solace's shift. But he's headed back out on patrol. And away we go. Putting in OT on the streets of Willimantic. I like to sit by uh, stop signs. To catch distracted drivers. Eight. So far today. As a police department, the total number is about 100 tickets since National Distracted Driving Awareness Month started April 1st. And you can tell because they'll drive real slow and you can see that they're doing something down. Most of the time you can see what they've got in their hand. And that's just what Corporal Salas spotted. This is a great spot. I like sitting here and just watching. Not even a minute after stopping. I'm watching my four-way stop sign. 
See if we get anybody that'll roll through them. See, like that. That's not a stop. And she's got her cell phone in her hand. How about that? Willimantic police say this detail is a two-pronged approach. We'll see what she's got to say. Enforcement for one. Why am I getting pulled over? Because you failed to come to a complete stop at the stop oh, sign. sign. Okay, while well, you had your cell phone in your hands. But more importantly, a hard lesson. Oh, please drive safely. Have a better day. Citing the New England Journal of Medicine, police say that in 2013 alone, 420,000 people were hurt in crashes due to a driver chatting or texting on a cell phone. 3,154 were killed. Accident reconstruction teams have a checklist. Speed, alcohol or drugs, or weather conditions. Cell phone's right at the top now. The average text takes three to five seconds. The distraction can take even less time. I, I mean, I was on the phone. Yeah. To okay. end in tragedy, Willimantic police point out the harsh irony in a very recent crash. Lost their arm because they lost control of a vehicle reaching for a cell phone. No one wants a ticket. We're trying to reduce that. But with enforcement, police say reduction is happening. 9.6% of infractions issued before April 2015 were due to distracted driving. In August, that dropped almost two percentage points, according to the state DOT. Still, handing out tickets, Corporal Salas says, is just too easy. Pretty prevalent. In Willimantic, John Charlton, Fox 61 News. At sunup, a road trip to pick up a piece of history. We'll get there and get back. The destination, a hangar at JFK. The return. Should arrive by 1 p.m. Would be Middletown. I think we may see them coming here first. Diane DeLuzio is the secretary of the Connecticut Trees of Honor Memorial Committee. She's also. I think he'll be proud of me today. A gold star mom. He was killed um, in an ambush. Her son Stephen died in Afghanistan. He is one of 65 men and women memorialized here, each with a marker and a tree. Stephen was in high school when 9-11 when happened. It's why it all made sense. He came home almost, almost, almost immediately saying that he wanted to join. That they came back. Sue went to New York. With one of the remaining few pieces of the World Trade Center. 13 feet of steel. Not a beam, but a rail recovered from the very bottom of the rubble. And this is 15 years. It was part of the rail system running under the Twin Towers. I thought it was two pieces. We all thought it was two pieces. Maybe not what they expected. I think it's, it has to come to the back one. I think so. But with some rethinking and a bit of repositioning. So now you just lift it up, right? Still a moving piece. Looks good. Permanently in place <laughs> at the park. A piece of 9-11. It's why my son went to war and why so many others did as well. With Sergeant Stephen Deluzio on watch. I want to believe that he's proud of me right now, and I'm as I am of him. And this memorial pathway is expected to be completed next month with phase three, and that'll include a special statue erected in this spot. In Middletown, John Charlton, Fox 61 News. Inside the Cheshire Academy gym. There are players way past their prime. Nice. And then there's one. Go, 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 go. Explode, explode. Rip, rip. Ready for prime time. Elijah Pemberton is a point guard. Averaged about 21 points per game. Who has committed to Hofstra. I'm really good at statistics. And here's a stat, his vertical. 38 inches. Has him playing above the rim. Go get it, go get it, go get it. Great job, man. Elijah is the prophet of slam. On the fast break, you know it's coming. Elijah's a freak of nature athlete. His high-flying thunder turned heads. Coach Kehoe came, came to my classroom, took me out, said uh, you've been nominated for one of the best dunkers in the country. Elijah's YouTube clip made the 18-year-old one of an elite eight invited to the final four weekend in Houston to compete. Only one in New England, too. I'm 5'10". Elijah is 6'4", and one of the dunks that put him over the top, so to speak, was dunking over one of his teammates who's 7'3". It's something I can tell my kids. I jumped over somebody 7'3". It was a great moment for everybody. Elijah expects to make more highlights at the 2016 American Family Insurance High School Slam Dunk Championship. I have been working on a dunk. Uh, I'm pretty sure somebody saw it before, but it's going to be really rare. 
He wouldn't give us a sneak peek, but there's sure to be one of these. And if he dunks over someone, it'll be a guy taller and braver than me. He went over a seven foot three guy. I don't think he was worried and you shouldn't worry about him jumping over you, John. Style points with power. Elijah will leave them with something to remember. This is a surprise, I'll leave it a surprise. At Cheshire Academy, John Charlton, Fox 61 News.